So in this video, we're going to go through a quick overview of the AI standard material, or AI standard surface material to be uh, specific. It's the workhorse material for Arnold. You can do just about anything with it without having to switch to different kinds of materials. Uh, so we have, we can do ice, we can do brick, we can do metals, plastics, lots of different things. And you do that simply by adjusting the settings. So we're going to go through the settings uh, right now. I have in this scene the Buddha statue from Stanford University. It's free for download. You can get this in a lot of different places online. And I have an HDR image in the background just giving me some nice lighting. And the HDR image I got from Polyhaven. So I have an AI standard material already applied to this statue. And if I adjust the settings, we can see what happens. So let's go with base. We'll cover some of these uh, later. So weight, color, diffuse roughness, and metalness. These are the ones that you usually uh, play around with. Weight, um, essentially, practically speaking, is a brightness slider. So it just makes it darker or brighter. Technically, what's happening is it's adjusting the amount of light that is reflected. Because if you think about how light behaves, if you've you know gone through physics in college, for example, you know that light bounces. So it comes off a light source, like a bulb, the sun, a fire. It hits an object, and then it bounces off. Not all of it is bounced. Some of it is absorbed. So this controls the amount. If it's set to 1, then that means no light is absorbed. Everything is bounced off. If it's set to 0, that's why it's black, because no light is bounced off. Everything is absorbed. By default, this is 1. You can adjust this if you want your material darker or brighter, but by default, that's not 1. Color is the color of your object. So you can pick here. You've got a color picker, like so. Now, it technically, it's the same thing with your brightness. Not all colors are absorbed. Not all colors are bounced off. So technically speaking, if I have, for example, a blue statue, something like this, all the other colors of the spectrum are absorbed except for blue. And that's why I see this object as blue, because blue is the only color that actually gets bounced off and makes it to my eyes. Diffuse roughness just adds a bit of roughness. I, I rarely use that. I don't really see the effect much. Okay, but what I'll do is I'll duplicate this. I can show you a difference with the next slider. I'm going to make a new AI standard by that one. And here, I'm going to turn up metalness. So metalness simply makes your object metallic. Okay, so metallic objects deal with reflections uh, and specular highlights differently than non-metallic objects. This slider should always be zero or one, because you don't really find semi-metallic objects in the real world. So either it's something is metallic or it's not. Okay, so let's pick a color, uh, maybe some sort of reddish brown if you want some gold, for example. Okay, moving on. Another AI standard material. Sign that. And here we can work on specular. So specular essentially is your reflections. So how reflective uh, something is. Okay. So you have your weight. That's how reflective. What the color the reflection is. And basically, just make this blue again so you can see it. See a darker blue. There we go. So basically, 
you always leave color as white for your specular, okay? The only time you change this is if you want some sort of special effect like polarized lenses where the reflection actually changes color. But 98% of the time, just leave that as white. Okay? And roughness is how sharp or how blurry the reflection is. So if I turn this down to 1, you see you get very sharp highlights. Right? And you see, if you look here, you're starting to actually see reflections. So if I turn this down a bit more, you can see it's reflecting the environment. So right there. If you turn your roughness up, this gets blurred. Something like that. So it's still reflecting, but it's not quite so clear. General rule of thumb, the smoother something is, the more reflective it is. And the rougher something is, the less reflective it is. Okay, or so the, the more blurred. Okay, so something like this would be like a very shiny plastic, perhaps, or ceramic, right? If I turn this up and you see the highlights are really blurred, this would be, you know, rubber, maybe. I can duplicate that. Let's get another AI standard surface. And for this one, let's take a look at transmission. So transmission is just a fancy word for transparency. So if an object is transmissive, okay, or if your material is transmissive, instead of bouncing light off, it lets light pass through. So if I turn like that. If I turn my weight all the way up, you see you're actually seeing through to the other side. So this is great for things like water, ice, crystals, uh, gemstones, things of that nature. Okay. You also have, if you go back up here to your specular, you have an IOR or an index of refraction or in short, a refractive index. And what that controls is how your light bends as it passes through the object. Because light travels in um, a set speed, right, at a constant speed, in a vacuum. But if it goes from one medium to another, it will slow down. So in this case, you have the air entering the glass and then exiting the glass, entering the air again, and then goes back to your eyes. So while in the glass, the air, sorry, the the light slows down. And the result is this, some sort of distortion, right? That's also the reason why you have the science experiment where you fill a glass half with water and then you put a spoon and the spoon looks like it's broken or bent. It's because of how light bends and slows down going from one medium to another. So the IOR controls that. So I can change my IOR. For example, if I have an IOR of 1, which is just air, I don't get any distortions. But if I go below that or above that, I start getting these distortions. <clears throat> and if you want the correct IOR, you can just go online and find them. So if you want IOR for glass, crystal, water, alcohol, uh, beer, you know, red wine, honey, milk. It's all online. Okay, so I think like water, if I'm not mistaken, is 1.33. So this would be uh, water. So still under transmission, you have color. Okay, so you can change that to something. Um, because this is fully transparent, like this is one, my base color is turned off, so that's uh, not in use. Okay, so I have this, and then you also have depth. So the thing about depth is, is the control of how much of the material the light has to go through to reach this color. So right now it's at zero, right? And that means everything is the same. If I turn this up, 
see even just a little bit, you'll see that these areas that are thinner, right, aren't as blue as the areas that are thicker, like here. Right, that's because of the setting of depth. So this has to go through this much to get to this color. Okay, if I get a nice, say, orange yellowish here, you can get a nice honey, right? And here you can see it even more. This area almost completely clear because it's very thin. And this area is pretty much amber. And the last one is a subsurface scattering. So I'll get another AI standard surface. I'll apply it there. And subsurface scattering is when light enters an object, right? But instead of just bending and exiting, it scatters. That's why it's called subsurface scattering, because they're scattering underneath the surface of the object. So when that happens, you get, let's turn it on. There you go, subsurface scattering. You get a nice softening effect. It's what you would use for, let's say, objects that are translucent. So, for example, thin sheets of paper. Um, what else? Uh, leaves, wax, right? Jade. Some gemstones um, are counted as translucent. So if I get something green, perhaps here. No, not specular. That should be white. So let's go up to base. Let's get a green color. And then for subsurface, all the way up, let's get the same green color. Maybe a bit darker. Okay. And you have different types. It's just different computations. The latest one is random walk version two. And that seems to be uh, you know, giving the best results. So you can see here it does appear very waxy. You'll see once it finishes rendering. Then you can also adjust your specular, whether you want it to be smoother or rougher, right? So just adjust your roughness. So it depends. Sometimes there are really silky, reflective, sort of smooth wax. If it's old wax that's been melted already, it might not be as, uh, as shiny. So then that depends. And these are just some examples of stuff that you can do with the AI standard surface once you get the hang of it.